In this video, I'm going to give you behind the scenes look into my last film. And I will break down my entire process for you. From how we pulled up the shots, to how I go about my storytelling, and how I exactly structure my videos. And I will give you all of the insights into how I use lighting to make my scenes look professional and everything else. So let's get into it. So every story begins with a spark, a moment of insight. And recently I've had a realization of a profound yet simple truth, the fleeting nature of time. See, time is the currency of life, yet so many people waste it. They are unaware of its value slipping through their fingers. And instead of doing the things that they should be doing, they are controlled by the things that they can't ignore. They are addicted to their phones, to their screens, and to all the noise going on around them. So with this realization, I created a video about how you can take back your time and become successful doing so. So after the underlying concept of the video was clear, it was time to pre-produce and shoot the video. And this might actually surprise some of you, but this entire video was shot on the Sony FX3 together with my 20 to 70 f4 lens and my 24 to 70 f2.8 lens. And the reason why I love this first lens so much is because of its versatility. Because the 20 mm lens allows me to get perfect establishing shots. And with these, I'm able to pull the viewers into each scene. But at the same time, I can use my 70 mm focal length for more cinematic tight scene. And it's unreal to have both in one lens. And the reason why I love the second lens so much is because of the 2.8 low aperture. It's perfect for low light, but it also provides a beautiful bokeh whenever I desire. And apart from that, the autofocus is great on both lenses. They both just really produce beautiful images. Now, some of you might know the struggle of always needing an extra person to film with. It's not only unproductive to constantly wait for others, but you also don't want to rely on others all the time. And that's the biggest reason why I use the Sony FX3 right now. Because with the autofocus, the flip screen and just the tripod, I can now shoot 80% of my videos all by myself. So while I'm editing, I might be missing some shots and then I go up quickly or down and I shoot them. And I can honestly imagine that now I can film like 80% of my videos by myself if I really needed to. And I truly mean that. And I hope that it motivates you to pick up the camera more often and not use solitude as an excuse not to be productive. Now there's one other thing other than gear that is extremely important for your videos. And this is obviously the lighting. So let's go over everything when it comes to lighting. Now these days, the quality of the image on YouTube is rarely noticeable. Because if you're a great filmmaker, you can now even look the iPhone look great. Yet when it comes to the quality of the lighting, it is noticeable. Because only great filmmakers know how to light their scenes correctly. And honestly, it makes a huge difference. And if you want to be considered a great filmmaker, you need to understand lighting. So yeah, I use the following lights when I'm traveling and when I'm back home. First, I use a Forza 60C full color from Nanlite. Then I use two Pavo tubes 2.0 50 Nexus. They are also from Nanlite. One small Pavo tube 2.0 6C. And lastly, I use one 150B bright bicolor with the softbox as a fill light. And actually, I also use a small sunset lamp that you can easily get on Amazon. Now, as I said, I think that lighting is one of the most important things to make your videos look like movies. And this counts for both shooting indoors and outdoors. And now I want to share the easiest and most important lighting cheat code with you. Because the moment I was able to understand this cheat code, I was able to better grasp the overall concept of lighting. So the cheat code is that you need to put the main subject between the camera and the light source. And this is also called backlighting or shooting from the shadow side. And by doing this, you will achieve the cinematic lighting that you will want to achieve. It is exactly what movies are doing when they light their scene. And apart from that, one of the most important things is to enhance the natural lighting that you already have. Don't go against this lighting that is naturally already present in your scene. And how can we enhance this lighting? And at the same time, you need to ask yourself, where in the scene is there excess light? And how can we decrease light here to create a stronger contrast when needed? Now let's look at our first scene to see how we use the technique. As you can see here, I use a lot of my scenes by placing myself between the light and the camera. And even if you shoot alone with your tripod, 
you can do this very easily and in this scene here you can see the backlight behind me so this is what creates the silhouette that separates me from the background and this is what makes the subject's texture and shape more noticeable making them stand out against the backdrop and if you start doing this yourself you will notice it very quickly so you want your subject to be outlined and separated from the background but you still want their features to be visible because you don't want them hidden in the shadow. So you can achieve this by using an additional light source such as a fill light or a reflector. This will help you softly illuminate the front of the subject while still keeping that nice backlighting. And now let's go over the next scene. So in this one, we are using the lights and the decorative light to create a three-point lighting system. The three-point lighting system is widely used in visual media and this technique uses three types of lights to effectively illuminate the subject and create a three-dimensional look. So firstly, the key light is the primary and strongest light source. It is positioned to one side of the subject to highlight them and create some shadows. Then the fill light is a softer and less intense one. It is placed on the opposite side to reduce shadows from the key light and control the scene's contrast. Then lastly, you have the backlight, which is also called the rim light, and this one is set behind the subject. It defines their edges and makes them stand out from the background. And then when you adjust the positions and the intensities of these lights, you can add depth and a cinematic appeal to the image. And now let's go over the third scene. So this one I shot in the bedroom and in the bathroom with the Nanlite Forza 60C and the Nanlite projection mount. Now what this projection mount allows you to do is to recreate a sunlight coming into your room for example. And it turned out quite amazing. So by darkening the scene I was able to add more contrast making it a bit more dramatic. And to be honest I was quite happy with how these scenes turned out. Now one tip though, don't overuse this effect but using it only in a couple of scenes. Now, when it comes to the filters that I use, I use three types of filters and these are necessary. So I use an ND filter, the diffusion filter and macro filters. For new people here, an ND filter is like sunglasses for your camera. Now the diffusion filter adds a slight halo to your highlights, making it look filmic. And the macro filters that I use can help you get really, really close to the subject. And by the way, these macro filters are quite cheap. You can get them on Amazon as well for around like 20 bucks. Now, some of you might have noticed the technique that I used to add emotions to the intro of the video. And this is done by lowering the shutter. And we used it in a couple of scenes to showcase stress displayed by the character. The low shutter will blur all the movement. And it's important that you use this, of course, with an ND filter, as the low shutter will make your scenes too bright otherwise. And then another accessory that I recommend using is the magic arm. It allows you to guide the camera in a way where it sticks to the subject, allowing you to get really cool and interesting object POV shots. And now let's go over the pre-production and storytelling of this video. Now this is a very challenging subject due to its complexity. And a lot of you asked me how I pre-produce and go about the storytelling of my videos. And to be honest, I used to struggle with this a lot as there are so many techniques and structures that you can follow to make sure that your videos will be interesting and watched until the end. And at the same time, think about this. If you create an amazing video visually, but it doesn't interest the viewer because you, for example, structured it wrong, so much time and energy is wasted. So what I do now is that I follow cards to structure and pre-produce my videos because it turned out to be the easiest way and the most pleasant way of doing so. And for this particular video, I actually followed a blueprint called Sparking Change, which is all about sharing the tips and solutions to a common problem in a society. And I found this blueprint great for my topic because it will help you take someone from A to B through something that you've struggled with in the past. But it will also allow you as the creator to establish yourself as an authority, leaving a greater impact. Now each card of this blueprint is a step in your script. The cool thing is that each card comes with a guide on how it works. So basically it gives you a proven structure that you can follow through through cards. But this time you are certain you followed the right steps to make sure that your video is great. So for example, for this video, I started off with a monologue hook. The most challenging moments of my life have always sparked change for personal growth. Now what this monologue hook does is that it mirrors the questions allowing me not to only create a curiosity gap about my struggles but also about the audiences. And then afterwards I used a technique called possible answers which is all about addressing the questions that might arise in my and your mind when introduced the monologue hook. And it's only when I realized how finite life is 
that I started living it on my own terms. So you can do this in multiple ways, but you need to make sure that it leaves the viewer wanting to find out more. You can do this, for example, through a reflective revelation, a dialogue-driven discovery, an action-oriented resolution, a symbolic answer, or a narrative progression. And now you probably ask yourself, what are those? So let me explain that. So a reflective revelation is you sharing a moment of introspection. And this will leave the viewer curious, but it also makes them ask themselves the same thing. And then a dialogue-driven discovery would be a conversation that you have with someone else. Then an action-oriented resolution would show you taking actions that lead to a solution. But then lastly, in a narrative progression, you would develop the plot in a way that naturally leads to resolving the questions. Now, after these two techniques, I crafted three compelling questions to finish off the hook. The aim of crafting compelling questions early on in your video is to make the viewer actively think and engage with your content. Are you spending every day of your life doing what you love? Are you fully present? Are you doing what you're meant to be doing? You can do this through establishing predictive questions, reflective questions, rhetorical questions, informational questions, or hypothetical questions. Now, when you pose a predictive question, you pose them to spark anticipation through what might happen next. And then reflective questions allow you to ask the viewers about their personal experiences or opinions related to the topic. And then rhetorical questions are used to emphasize a point or introduce a new concept. But informational questions are there to encourage viewers to seek out more information which you later on introduce. And then lastly, hypothetical questions challenge the viewers with hypothetical scenarios related to the content. And then after all of this, I introduced the hard and confronting truth many people face. Because many of us aren't, and we're not even aware of it. We often live on autopilot, dictated by routines and expectations set by others, but not by ourselves. And this lack of awareness leads us to unconsciously waste our precious time we have here on Earth. So the aim here is to present them in a way that engages your audience, provokes thoughts and encourages them to seek a deeper understanding of the subject. Now then to finish off the introduction, I introduce the consequence. Because we focus on what others are doing, losing touch with our own lives as if we're living someone else's story. And the reason I do that is because I want to highlight the common mistakes that my audience might be making so I can introduce the solutions later. Now doing this will help you create an engaging narrative that is both informative and transformational. And therefore, if done correctly, your video will be impactful. So yeah, hopefully that explains my thought process behind the intro a little bit. And if you want to get access to Storyflow, which is the software I'm using here, then you need to check out the link in the description. It's actually my software, so it's not finished yet, but once it will be, you will be informed. I will only release it to a small portion of the people that will apply to the waitlist, so make sure to sign up. And I'll see you in the next video.